Is it better to pay off debt or invest? That's the million dollar question. Especially with debt rising to all time highs and the stock market's really strong performance over the past couple of years. It's a question that's only getting more relevant. Dave Ramsey's method of paying off debt first no matter what just doesn't really fly anymore. I'm gonna break down this question by focusing on eight different types of debt. Credit card debt, private undergraduate student loan debt, federal undergraduate student loan debt, personal loans, mortgages, home equity lines of credit, business loans, and car loans. If you wanna skip ahead to your section, just go to the description below. I have timestamps for everything. I know that this is not the only debt out there, obviously, but this is definitely the eight most common. Okay, let's get right to the heart of this thing. Is it better to pay off debt or invest? Number one, credit card debt. Should you pay off your credit card debt or invest? The average credit card APR was 15.91% in the first quarter of 2021, according to data from the Federal Reserve. Meanwhile, the average return on the S&P 500 over the past 50 years has been around 7% adjusting for inflation. The S&P 500 is a great benchmark for investing because it's the top 500 companies listed on the stock exchange in the US. It's a relatively safe investment, safe meaning boring, but a great benchmark when you are trying to figure out the return that you can comfortably get on investments. If you assume that you will get a 7% return when you invest, the 15.91% APR on a credit card is a huge number. That means that if you were trying to invest while also paying off that debt, it's kind of like trying to swim in a riptide. It's not that it's impossible to do, it's just that you're gonna be completely exhausted while doing it. So, if you have credit card debt, I would recommend paying that bad boy off ASAP. It will help you more in the long run to be credit card debt free first and then invest. So, this debt is denied. Number two, federal undergraduate student loans. Should you pay off your federal student loans or invest? The average federal undergraduate student loan fixed interest rate is 3.73%. Because this rate is relatively low, you can invest while paying off this debt. I have one pro tip, which has to do with the federal student loan freeze, which as of this video being recorded is still happening. While federal student loans are still frozen, you could choose to invest that money instead of sending it towards your debt. After a year, you can then sell your investments to help pay off your debt. Of course, just throwing as much as you can towards your debt now also won't hurt either. So this debt is approved. Number three, private undergraduate student loans. Should you pay off your private undergraduate student loans or invest? Private student loans are loans from a bank, credit union, or online lender, and don't offer protections and alternative repayment options that federal student loans offer because federal student loans are provided from, you know, the government. Private undergraduate student loan rates range from 1.04% to 14.99%. If you have a loan with a fixed interest rate, it means that the rate won't change the entire time that you have the loan. If you have a loan with a variable interest rate, then that means that the rate can change on a monthly or quarterly basis, depending on your contract. Whew, well, what doozy is, makes me, <laughs> makes me sweat just thinking about them. <laughs> Because private student loans have such a wide range of rates, it's impossible to have a really clear cut and dry answer for this one. But if you have low interest private student loans, you can invest, low being anything under 7%. If you have high interest student loans, then you should not invest. High again being anything over 7%. Again, I'm using that 7% because of the good old S&P 500 data. 
If you have a fixed interest rate, that means that the rate is not going to change over time. So if your fixed interest rate is below 7%, then you are golden. But if you have a variable interest rate, then you really have to keep your eye on the rate. If the rate moves above 7%, you have to pause your investments. Just something to remember. So this debt is a because it really depends on what interest rate you have. Number four, personal loans. Should you pay off your personal loan or invest? The APR of personal loans can vary from 3% to 35%, which is terrifying. I really hope whoever is watching this does not have a 35% personal loan rate. Anyway, if you have a high personal loan rate, high being anything above 7%, then you should not invest. It helps you more to pay it off first and then invest. If you have a low interest personal loan, low being anything below 7%, you can invest while also paying off this debt. So this debt is a because it really depends on what interest rate you have. Number five, mortgages. Should you pay off your mortgage or invest? Currently, a 30-year fixed rate mortgage has an APR of 2.996%. Mortgage rates are historically low right now, but over the past 30 years, they have rarely been above 10%. While mortgage rates are at such low lows, please invest while paying off your mortgage. So this debt is approved. Number six, home equity line of credit. Should you pay off your home equity line of credit or invest? Home equity lines can vary from 2.24% to 21%. Again, if you have an interest rate below 7%, you can invest while also paying down this debt. Anything above 7%, focus all of your energy on just paying off the loan and then you can invest. So this debt is another because it really depends on whatever interest rate you have. Number seven, business loan. Should you pay off your business loan or invest? Currently, business loans have an APR range of 2.58% to 7.16%. Because the typical APR is at or below 7%, you can invest while paying this down. So this debt is approved. Number eight, cars. Should you pay off your car loan or invest? Car loans are notoriously tied to your credit score. If you have a better credit score, then you will get a better interest rate. If you have a terrible credit score, then you will get a worse interest rate. The average APR for a new car loan is 4.21%. And for a used car, it's 6.05% with a credit score of 661 to 780. Again, because the APR of the car loan at this credit score is below 7%, you can invest while paying off this debt. If you have an APR with a car loan above 7%, you really should pay down that debt first and then invest. So this debt is a because it really depends on what interest rate you have. There is one big exception to all of this. Not every company offers a 401k match, but if yours does, take it. The most common match companies offer is 50% what you put into your 401k, up to 6% of your salary. In other words, your employer matches half of what you contribute, but no more than 3% of your salary total. To get the maximum amount of the match, you'd have to put in 6%. This is essentially free money that you'd be leaving on the table if you don't do this. So even if you have high interest debt, I highly recommend taking advantage of the cash on the table. Okay, let's recap. Investing while in debt really depends on your specific financial situation, but in general, debt with interest below 7% equals good to invest while paying off that debt. Debt with interest above 7% equals pay off that sucker first and then invest. 
The goal is to have compound interest working for you, not against you. I also can't let you go without reminding you that the type of investing that we encourage is smart long-term investing, not any day trading or get rich quick schemes, none of that nonsense. Slow and steady wins the race. If you want to learn more about investing, please check out the links below. I break down how to diversify your investments featuring Beyonce and how to invest in stocks. Thanks so much for tuning in and be sure to like, subscribe, all, all that good stuff. And if you have a specific question about investing, please leave it in the comments below.